expose, criticize, and repudiate thoroughly, and launch fierce attacks on all kinds of representatives of the bourgeoisie. In order to truly understand the context of the Cultural Revolution and the events in China that took place from 1966 to 1976, we must go back to 1911, the fall of the Qing Dynasty. The history of China is rich and detailed. Events, teachings, wars, and rulers influenced from thousands of years ago became the building blocks upon which Chinese society would grow. An example of this were the notes of students writing the words of a widely unpopular government official, which would later exist to become the basis of Confucianism, the foundation of Chinese imperial law for millennia to follow. <laughs> Though the advocation of traditionalism when it came to society would keep China relatively stable and unified throughout its history, by the time of colonialism and foreign influence, the Chinese government policies held the country significantly behind other nations, such as Great Britain. By the time Great Britain invaded in 1839, the country descended into chaos. After this point, the government would struggle to maintain power as foreign influence, as well as rampant corruption, destroyed the country from inside and out many people would begin to consider new ideas apart from those endorsed by the monarchy, which would culminate in 1911, when the Chinese monarchy would be overthrown in favor of a republic. The fall of the Qing dynasty marked a new beginning for China, one that many people from all sides of the political spectrum in the ROC and the PRC agree on today. However, the Republic's newfound unity under Sun Yat-sen would not last long. After the death of Sun Yat-sen, the country would be absorbed into chaos once more, with warlords taking politics into their own hands throughout the country. The Republican government would officially exist, Traditionalism would remain the order of the day throughout the countryside, due to a lack of government authority. In 1916, for example, a Republican general, Yuan Shikai, would proclaim himself as the new emperor of China, before being deposed only one year later. Though this incident was minor, it still does demonstrate just how strong people's feelings towards traditional society were, even after the fall of the Qing dynasty, and the proclamation of the new republic. During this time of political chaos, a new political movement would be formed. This political movement, the Communist Party of China, and its military wing, the Chinese Red Army, would strive to create a new nation, which was planned to become the Chinese Soviet Republic. Though only first started with 50 members, the group would grow rapidly, getting massive support throughout the countryside by promises of greater rights for the peasantry in the fields. Due to the anti-government nature of the Communist Party, fighting would occur between them and the nationalist Chinese, apart from when Japan invaded, a temporary peace in the country. The Communist Party was not the only group advocating for change, however. Others, such as Wang Jingwei, advocated the creation of a new society, albeit under direct Japanese influence. After World War II and the loss of Wang, the dichotomy of Chinese politics would once again come to a head during the Chinese Civil War. Aided by the Soviet Union in 1945, the Chinese communists would now have the upper hand in the fight for China, with the region's industrial heartland in Manchuria now under the Chinese communists' control. Victory in the Civil War would come for the communists when all of the mainland would be controlled. Though at this time the Republic of China still did exist on islands such as Hainan and Taiwan, they were no longer any sort of direct threat as they had been when on the mainland. With the civil war now over and a new nation proclaimed, a new era had begun. The first action was to eliminate the former leaders and officials who had not joined the Chinese Communist Party, 
such as during the mass executions at the Canadrome in Shanghai. During this time, the Great Leap Forward began, a massive industrial change in society involving the restructuring of rural areas and a national effort to produce more steel. Though these ideas, if executed perfectly, would bring the country to become a world superpower in only a few years, naturally, as can be expected, perfection was not achieved. The Great Chinese Famine had begun because of these programs, as well as opposition from the party's formerly most vocal supporters, the farmers and workers. <laughs> When the famine started, opposition to the government grew. It is from this opposition that new policies would come about. In March of 1966, the government fired Liu Dingyi, the director of the Ministry of Culture, and instead replaced his position with a so-called five-man group of the party's highest cadres. It is from this that a new idea was able to grow and come about, the connection between party and culture itself, with the dismissal of old ideas as anti-party, and hence disallowed within the one-party state. Mass rallies would begin to be held not just for major events or achievements, but to demonstrate loyalty to the party itself. By August of 1966, the Cultural Revolution had officially begun. The Cultural Revolution was different than the Great Leap Forward in many ways. The Cultural Revolution was to assure loyalty and prevent what happened in China oh so many times before, a return to traditionalism, and hence the loss of the party's control. If these ideas of traditionalism could be removed from society altogether and replaced with direct loyalty, the control of the party could be guaranteed. Inside the party, not everyone advocated for the Cultural Revolution. Liu Xiaoqi, for example, who was the titular leader of China at the time, didn't want anything to do with the Cultural Revolution at all. Liu Xiaoqi was not sent out into the countryside into exile, but was instead kept in power and subject to common and repeated humiliation from the party and from the public. It was only after medicine would be withheld from him that he would die after complications of pneumonia in 1967. Deng Xiaoping, a Communist Party member in a relatively high position, who had many economic ideas apart from the party, was targeted as well. The Deng Xiaoping would eventually become paramount leader of China in 1982, during the Cultural Revolution, he was fiercely attacked, at one point being thrown out of a fourth-story window by a group of Red Guards, leaving him severely injured. Lin Biao was an interesting man. Although preferred to become the next leader of China by Mao himself, Lin hoped that this change in power would come much sooner. Lin Biao was an interesting man. Although preferred to become the next leader of China by Mao himself, Lin hoped that this change would occur much sooner. Lin was a very vocal supporter of Mao's policies during the Cultural Revolution, as can be seen on the back of this record from 1967. However, in private, such as in a secret report written by Lin. And only discovered after his death, he would call Mao a social fascist, a false revolutionary, and a Trotskyite. It is with these names that Lin would advocate for an armed rebellion against Mao, using the Air Force to fly around the country to spark guerrilla rebellions wherever they landed. Lin Biao would attempt to kill Mao in 1971 by blowing up his train car. This would ultimately fail, causing Lin to try and escape out of China, where he would die in a plane crash after his airplane went down in Mongolia. Lin Biao wasn't the only one in on his plan, however, and many disgruntled army officials would take part in the plot as well. Although the People's Liberation Army's foremost loyalty is to the party, even that is not always the most steadfast, as could be seen through the generals conspiring with Lin.
Though Mao did invent the ideas carried out throughout the country, many in high positions would take the words of Mao very seriously, as well as exploiting these words for their own personal gain. The most notable of these so-called ultra-Maoists were the Gang of Four, which consisted of Zhang Chunqiao, the chairman of the city government of Shanghai, Yao Wenyuan, a literary critic and politician, Wang Hongwen, the vice chairman of the Communist Party, and most importantly, Mao Zedong's wife, Jiang Qing. These people tended to start massive public support for their own gain, such as Jiang Qing. She would put herself in a position of massive power through her close ties to Mao, and from this power, she would end up suppressing her opponents and putting herself at the front of her own propaganda campaign. Kangsheng, during his own life, was not part of the Gang of Four. Though a relatively unknown figure in Chinese politics, his leverage over the Red Guards earned him the title, The Black Hand Behind the Red Guards by Mao. Late in the Cultural Revolution, Kang would also be the force that would send the army after the Red Guards, who were partially moved to do their actions by Kang Sheng in the first place. The Cultural Revolution attempted to bring all of society under the control of the state. Music, cinema, and even the language would be adjusted to fit the party's needs. Since the Communist Party had brought peace to the country, as in, the warlords were gone and so was Japan, many would support the party, even in extreme times such as these. Partly from fear, partly from the party's influence itself, and partly from the truly huge scale of the movement, almost everyone would be involved with the Cultural Revolution somehow in China. Because of the Red Guards, many sources of traditionalism would be targeted, as well as those who supported them themselves. The tomb of Confucius would attempt to be destroyed during this time, only protected by an army general after attacks on the tomb had begun. All music would become revolutionary, praising Mao and the party, while other forms of the medium would be deemed as reactionary. The language itself, too, would come under change during the Cultural Revolution. Though there were already character simplifications during the 1930s and the 1950s, it would be attempted to become yet simplified further, resulting in Chinese characters with little meaning compared to their traditional and first-round simplified counterparts. The Cultural Revolution was a truly giant movement, attempting to change all forms of society for what the party themselves felt would be better in the long run. This Cultural Revolution would not last forever, however. Upon the death of Mao in 1976, it was planned that his successor, Hua Guofeng, would continue the Cultural Revolution onwards. Under Hua, however, many formerly purged political figures would be brought back into politics, such as Deng Xiaoping. Eventually, though the Communist Party would still lead, tradition would be allowed to return to society. The language was returned to its original, simplified state and vowed to be left the same as it was even to today. Though the Cultural Revolution changed society, many of its effects would be overturned after the death of Mao Zedong. A major example of this were the trials of the Gang of Four, which cemented the government's policy carried out even to today, which prevents groups of people such as the so-called ultra-Maoists from taking power. And that was the Cultural Revolution.